Menstrual Hygiene Day, Wikipedia Article Audio Menstrual Hygiene Day is an annual awareness day on May 28 to highlight the importance of good menstrual hygiene management. It was initiated by the German-based NGO WASH United in 2014 and aims to benefit women and girls worldwide. Menstrual Hygiene Day has received the support of over 270 global partners who are committed to making MHM a priority worldwide. Terminology Objectives Raising Awareness Partners Government Accountability Activities 2015 Background Health and psychosocial aspects Sanitation facilities at schools Access to materials US and UK Taboos History Choice of date An appropriate menstrual hygiene management is defined as Menstrual Hygiene Day is meant to serve as a platform to bring together individuals, organizations, social businesses, and the media to create a united and strong voice for women and girls around the world, helping to break the silence about menstrual hygiene management. The objectives of MHD include Menstrual Hygiene Day makes audible and visible a growing transnational movement that promotes body literacy and autonomy, as well as gender equality. There are currently 410 official partners. These include international non-governmental organizations, such as Plan International, SNV, Plan, Water for People, Women in Europe for a Common Future. Further partners are many national and regional NGOs as well as suppliers of menstrual hygiene products, washable menstrual pads and menstrual cups. For partners working in developing countries, the day is not only an opportunity to raise awareness, but also to strengthen government accountability in MHM-related matters. In Kenya, the Ministry of Health is developing a national MHM strategy that is set to launch on Menstrual Hygiene Day 2015, i.e. May 28, 2015. This is an important step WASH sector actors working with the Ministry are excited about. The development of this strategy is extremely important because it shows that the government is committed to making sure that MHM materials are accessible and affordable. This is great because this is an issue that MH Day advocacy partners in Kenya have been working really hard to push. On and around May 28, 2015, organizations and individuals from all over the world came together to recognize the second Menstrual Hygiene Day under the theme Let's End the Hesitation Around Menstruation. In total, 127 events in 33 countries took place using the Day American Samoa an opportunity to engage men and boys as well, linked to other important women's and girls' issues, advance policy advocacy, reach the marginalized, and challenge societal norms that claim that menstrual periods are shameful or dirty. Inadequate menstrual hygiene management is connected with several problems that females face, in particular in developing countries. The current silence about menstruation limits women's and adolescent girls' access to relevant and important information about their bodies, directly affecting their health, education, dignity, and human rights. In a 2014 study conducted in India, the researchers found that as many as 42% of women who participated in the study did not know about sanitary pads or from where in their anatomy menstruation originated from and most of them were scared or worried on first menstruation. Worldwide, one in three women does not have access to a working toilet at all. 
Menstrual hygiene management issues have been ignored by professionals in the water, sanitation and hygiene sector, and in the health and education sectors, too. Poor MHM may affect the reproductive tract but the specific infections, the strength of effect, and the route of transmission, remain unclear. In India, a majority of girls are at risk for reproductive tract infections because of poor MHM and RTI can lead to various disabilities if not treated early on. Reproductive tract infections are the cause of 30-50% of prenatal infection. Due to prejudices surrounding the issue, some women in India do not eat or take showers during their menstruation. Girls' self-image may be negatively impacted by adverse attitudes towards menstruation. In many parts of sub-Saharan Africa, girls can miss up to five days of school a month or drop out entirely due to insufficient access to water, sanitation and hygiene facilities and menstrual hygiene products. Improving access to wash facilities can actually increase girls' attendance at school. A program for school sanitation in Bangladesh increased girls' enrollment at school by 11%. Menstrual waste is largely ignored in schools in developing countries, despite it being a significant problem. Girls' access to water and sanitation at school is only available at 47% and 46% of all schools globally. Often, School toilets for girls are missing bins for menstrual waste collection with the result that pads may be spread all around the school compound area. This pollutes the environment and also causes embarrassment for the school girls. In the United States, girls who are unable to afford feminine hygiene products may miss school in order to avoid the embarrassment of staining their clothes. In low-income countries, girls' choices of menstrual hygiene materials are often limited by the costs, availability, and social norms. A lack of affordable hygiene products means inadequate, unhygienic alternatives are used, which can present a serious health risk. Menstrual cups offer a long-term solution compared to some other feminine hygiene products because they do not need to be replaced monthly. The quality of the material also makes them a reliable and healthy menstrual hygiene solution, as long as there is access to clean water for washing them. Girls and women in the workplace often miss work because they don't have access to sanitary materials and places of employment in some countries don't provide resources for women or even have proper toilets. Women in Bangladesh who work in factories have reported that due to the cost of sanitary products for menstruation which they could not afford, they have resorted to using factory floor rags in place of pads and tampons leading to dangerous infections and missed work. Menstruation can be a barrier to education for many girls, as a lack of effective sanitary products restricts girls' involvement in educational and social activities. Often they do not attend school due to fear of leaking, shame or embarrassment, period pain, or inadequate sanitation facilities that do not allow them to wash or change in privacy. This applies mainly to schoolgirls from low-income families, since disposable hygiene products are a monthly expense that many females simply cannot afford. Adequate sanitation facilities and menstrual hygiene products are just one part of the solution to menstrual taboos that impede women's progress in many developing countries. Knowledge is critical for girls to feel comfortable with menstruation and to gain a positive awareness of their bodies. Even many low-income and slash or homeless girls and women in the inner cities of the United States cannot afford sanitary supplies. Food banks in New York report that feminine hygiene products are in high demand. 
Homeless women in the United States face the challenge of not being able to shower or use the communal toilet in homeless shelters as often as they need to in cases where there are restrictions on toilet usage. In New York, proposals to help lower-income women access menstrual sanitary supplies includes proposals to remove the sales tax on feminine hygiene products and distributing free tampons in public schools. Homeless women in other industrialized countries, such as the United Kingdom, face problems affording tampons and sanitary napkins. Despite the fact that menstruation is a healthy biological process, it is approached with hesitance and misinformation because of deeply rooted cultural taboos surrounding menstruation. For example, in many traditional Hindu homes in India, girls and women face restrictive taboos relative to menstruation, such as being denied entry to the temple and the kitchen. In areas around the Yahabu district, the belief is that menstruation is a disease and not a normal biological process, and therefore women who are menstruating are not allowed to sleep on beds, enter kitchens touch male members of their family or eat spicy foods. Cultural, religious and traditional beliefs particularly in developing countries can lead to restrictions that women or girls face during their period. In some societies, women do not wash their bodies, shower or bathe during menstruation. They may not be allowed to use water sources during menstruation. Even if they have access to toilets, they might not use them because of the fear of staining the toilet bowls. This impairs the use of menstrual cups compared to pads as the cups are normally emptied into toilets. In 2012, several important groups involved in public health began to break the silence on MHM and turn their attention to the issue globally including grassroots organizers, social entrepreneurs, and United Nations agencies. In May 2013, WASH United used a 28-day social media campaign, for example on Twitter, called May Number Menstravaganza to generate awareness about menstruation and MHM as important considerations within water, sanitation, and hygiene development initiatives. Those involved with the social media campaign, including WASH Advocates, Girls Globe, and Ruby Cup, were encouraged by the positive feedback for the May Number Menstravaganza and they decided to create a Global Awareness Day for Menstruation. On May 28, 2014, Many people around the world celebrated Menstrual Hygiene Day for the first time with rallies, exhibitions, movie screenings, workshops, and speeches. There were 145 partners involved with the first MHD. For 2015, a hashtag campaign on social media lent a light-hearted look at challenging societal norms with the tag number If Men Had Periods. The campaign by WaterAid, released in time for Menstrual Hygiene Awareness Day, created videos spoof ads where men are proud of having their periods and used manpons instead of tampons. The campaign helped raise awareness about women who don't have access to safe water, hygiene, and sanitation, when their monthly visitor comes along. Another aspect of the campaign is that it helped bring men into the conversation so that they could help tackle the stigma in largely patriarchal societies and encourage women and girls to embrace their cycle with pride instead of shame. In Uganda, 2015 celebrations kicked off with a march to Parliament where a charter on MHM was signed and then the march continued to the National Theatre for presentations by primary and secondary schools. May 28 has symbolic meaning. May is the fifth month of the year and women menstruate an average of five days every month. Also, the menstrual cycle averages 28 days. 
Women and adolescent girls use a clean material to absorb or collect menstrual blood, and this material can be changed in privacy as often as necessary for the duration of menstruation. MHM also includes using soap and water for washing the body as required, and having access to facilities to dispose of used menstrual management materials. To address the challenges and hardships many women and girls face during their menstruation, to highlight the positive and innovative solutions being taken to address these challenges, to catalyze a growing, global movement that recognizes and supports girls' and women's rights and build partnerships among those partners on national and local level to engage in policy dialogue and actively advocate for the integration of menstrual hygiene management into global, national, and local policies. Programs and projects, it creates an occasion for media work, including social media.